Are you building an AI powered no code app and using OpenAI or Claude? Well, now's the time to start taking Google Gemini seriously. And one reason for that being that they have added in grounding. This is not going out into your garden barefoot. This is bringing in Google search results directly into your AI API request as a tool and I'm going to take you through each step necessary to do that. I will just say up top that it was a little bit fiddly because you have to set up a billing account to link it into your API key in order to access grounding but once you've done that uh, you should have an API key that has enabled grounding. Um, I will just point out I still don't see grounding in the playground here. I think that's because they've not released it in the, the uh, playground into the UK and the EU. Uh, but I can get a response through the API connector. So let me show you how I've done that. But before I go any further, if you're building an app with Bubble and you want to accelerate that process, help you get to launch as quickly as possible, then click the link down in the description because we've got a huge library of Bubble educational resources and courses available to you if you become a Planet No Code member. So click the link down in the description to find out more about that. Uh, but if we dive right back in, I've set this up in a previous video. It looks really similar to what you can achieve with OpenAI. I will just go through uh, the key differences. One is that we are authenticating the call using the private key in the URL, not in the header. It has key name, there's my private key. How have I got that far? Well, I, I've got this and I say get code and uh, it says to put the private key or the API key in the end with the key name there. Make sure you do it exactly how I've done it so that it is secure within Bubble and not available to your users as within the front end workflow data. Uh, and then you send the message just like this, very similar to if you're using OpenAI or Claude. Um, but in order to use grounding, uh, we're going to take this bit here. So I'm going to copy everything here. This is just the grounding documentation. Um, I'm going to copy that and paste it in here instead. And so you can see where our query goes. And effectively, it's using the tool Google Search Retrieval. Uh, and yeah, so it's using Google Search as a tool to bring it in. So this should give you and get past those frustrations of using an AI model where it says, oh, I can't access recent data. And so the one that they use here is the uh, current Google stock price. I'm cutting that to my clipboard. I'm adding in dynamic data here or dynamic values like a merge tag. So I'll say message. Uh, that would give me this box at the bottom. It's not marked as private because I want to be able to insert data into this in a workflow. And so I've just pasted it back in, making sure that I've got the speech marks. And uh, so it's gonna say, what is the current Google stock price? Now I will say before I initialize this that I have found it to be a little bit patchy in my testi testing this morning. I tried asking it about an event local to me that I know would get data based on Google search results. Uh, and it couldn't do it. So I'm just gonna be using the demo they've got here. It does seem that grounding has only been released within the last few days, so hopefully we'll see some improvement there. So let's reinitialize the call. And um, we can tell that grounding has worked, and I've seen this in the uh, documentation because we get this grounding metadata section back. If it doesn't work, you won't get that section. And so this is pulling in uh, the Google stock price uh, as of the date, most recent source. Now, this is making some bold claims. It's saying basically bring search results into the AI, get a response by combining the two. I will just say that this is not the 1st of November, this is the 4th of November. So it is still not pulling in the most recent results. Uh, so the local one that I tried is, uh, let, let, let's say, let's ask a question, um, what, time are London fireworks in 2024 um, and reinitialize and just see what we get back. Yeah, so interestingly, we get back that it doesn't have access to the data and we don't get back the grounding metadata. So this may be because it's a new feature. This may be because I am in the UK and it does say somewhere in the documentation that grounding isn't accessible in the UK, but I just thought it's such an amazing feature to show. The other reason, of course, why you might consider using Gemini over Claude or um, 
OpenAI is, uh, where have I got here? Simply the scale of their context window. If you've been experimenting with Notebook LM, you'll know just how powerful an AI gets when you can put tons and tons of data into it, thousands of tokens. In fact, into Gemini, you can put a million tokens of data. You know, that is page, I mean, it tells you here, that's, that's a book that is multiple research studies uh, it's hours of audio it can all go into the context window. This is obviously the trajectory AI is going. I would expect OpenAI and uh, Anthropic to expand their context windows, but I do honestly believe we're living in a future where uh, perhaps, uh, hopefully security, privacy-wise, a local AI on device is gonna have access to all of your data as part of it, uh, as part of the, the training data that goes into every query that you make. So there we go, I'm excited about Gemini. If you've got any questions, leave a comment down below. If you get stuck with a bubble API connector, you can always connect with me directly and book a coaching session. The link is down in the description.